open the page. <laughs> I don't want to hear you say that. Put that umbrella around the one to take it off you. Warum? We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. The Bishop of Winchester School in Bournemouth came out of special measures two years ago. The maths department's under pressure to improve on its 22% A to C's and is targeting a 3% increase. Historically, maths has had difficulty in recruiting quality staff. John Bailey's here to help out a new boy. Jeff Garnett spent 25 years in primary schools, but was made head of maths here five months ago. He's about to observe Joanne Warner, who's become his closest ally. Jo's targets include improving her questioning techniques and upping her pace with higher achieving groups like her year eight top set. As a manager new to the job, can Jeff critically assess such a close colleague? I want to see how many you can do. The clock is ticking. Off you go. Yes. Do the questions on the back. Do the questions on the back, yes. Yeah. But obviously, don't take too much space up, OK? OK, so the clock is ticking, ladies and gentlemen. The starter, getting the kids involved whilst they were doing that first bit, I thought was really good, well organised. Can you just put your hands up? You've got 20 out of 20. Well done. OK. Um, at the end of the lesson, I'll come and give you some maths credits, cos that's really good going. OK. The main core of the lesson, I thought that she got involved with that, explained everything very well indeed, so the children knew exactly what they were doing. Today's lesson, we're looking at substitution. What level are we working at today? Yep. Five. Level five. OK. By the end of today... When I saw the level five up there, I think I was a little bit disappointed and it could have been split into 5A, 5B, 5C. And possibly there were some elements that touched on to level six as well. I would have liked to have seen that explanation come through. Right, if we're looking at the next sort of level we're doing this, we actually bring substitution into formula. OK, we've got formula here to convert temperature from Celsius into Fahrenheit, OK? The formula is here. F equals 9C divided by 5 plus 32. We want to convert 35 degrees C into Fahrenheit. I've started for you here, so you can see what I've done. OK, you can try and fill in the rest. I'm only going to give you about two minutes. OK, so question one, exercise 10D, once you've finished that question there. OK? And if you're not sure about it, don't worry, go straight to the exercise. I noticed that quite late in the lesson, about three quarters of an hour in, she was having to ex explain various bits of process or issues that, that the children still hadn't got to. Right. I won't go to that. I know what you now. mean, because I've actually highlighted mathematics, language and vocabulary. Four times one, minus three. Yeah. Yep. It's a minus. OK. So, if we've got... Four times minus one. What are we going to have? Minus four. Excellent. And then we take another three away. Lots of children needed uh, extra help, and people helped. Obviously, um, you can't cater for everybody when you're trying to help one, so that's why I interjected, I think is the word, and helped. Are you clear with that yes. now? Yes. You sure? Yes. Okay. So we do three times three plus five. What I would have liked to have seen from just a few of the children was a bit more discussion. And perhaps some of the questioning techniques could sort of bring that discussion. You see at the very bottom there, it says convert 35C. Okay. So on that equation, C was 35. So you're going to put... There's two areas that I can, I, I can actually see I can work on in particular. Uh, the first area is uh, looking at... Um, uh, 
sublevels. Sublevels. Getting the climbing frame right. Getting the climbing yeah. frame right. And then finally looking at maybe how we can actually look at in involving the children more. The word that I had written down was oracy. Uh, I'm standing fairly close to that child at the back of the room, Ziggy. Wherever you see the scene, put in the number she's telling you instead. The act of substitution is causing him trouble. Um, he's not sure about multiplying or adding. Um, so he's not quite sure whether 5x, if the x turns into a 4, whether right. it means 5 add 4 or whether it means 5 it's times It's the bod mass, isn't it? Bod mass, yes. And, yes. But it's, it's not quite that he doesn't understand bod mass. The child next to him knew he was going wrong and they'd exchange glances. Yeah. Um, and it was a bit like, you know, if you're writing a comedy programme, um, the child next door gives it a look. Uh, Ziggy looks at it and looks uncertainly at what the kid's doing next door. And then they both put their cards up and then Ziggy pulls his down quickly <laughs> and rubs it out. Right. And so I'm thinking, ha-ha, okay. uh, I want these children to have permission to talk okay. to each other. Okay. Right, put seven times two here. Equals 14. And then add eight. OK. If you carry on doing this working out, you'll start to see how you're doing it, OK? Yep. Another thing that's not happening in the classroom is I'm not hearing children being asked um, or being expected to explain the operations out loud. I want Ziggy to hear this language because he's far from being a stupid child. He just hasn't quite got it. I understand the point you're making. Yeah. yeah. So four squared, what's four squared? 15. Yep, plus three. What's the answer? 19. 19. OK, so you need to do that minus two. with the others. Mm. So it's a minus number, so it's going to be a minus answer. So it's seven times minus two is minus 14. So, so there's them helping each other. There's the use of children to vary uh, the explanation. Yeah, it's collaborative, isn't it? Yes, yeah, and the habit of yeah. explaining or working out loud. Can you show me, using your thumbs, how do you feel about the chapter you're doing? Thumbs, see them? Right, so I've got a few people with thumbs up and a few with half, but none with down, which is fantastic. There's okay. Ziggy, he's got his whiteboard, and they've got their thumbs up and they've got their thumbs down. Yes. Uh, and that's, that's interactive in the sense that they're giving feedback to the teacher in more than one way. That's right, I, I, and they're giving a lot of action with that. And, and, and in that process, what's happening is that the teacher has provided a way that these children can learn uh, with the activity of the whiteboard, the activity of the worksheet, and the activity of the envelope. Right, who's got envelope number one? Ah, oh, Ziggy, can you open envelope number one, please? What is it? Two C add B. Envelope number two, please. George has envelope number two. George? C equals five. Can you work out the answer? C equals five. I like the way she used uh, the resources, especially with the envelopes. I thought that was a really good exercise. And the children feel engaged. It could have been a boring lesson where it was more didactic than it was interactive. She made it interactive in a way that everybody had worksheets or they looked at the whiteboard or they had the white writing boards to write on, and that was good. So, resource-wise, she met her target as far as I was concerned. Mm. Let's see those boards. It's not oracy. They're not discussing the problem with each other, and maybe that's the difference we need to make. Yeah, and so there's interactivity sort of for its own sake and because it raises the general level of, 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 of engagement in the that's room. That's right. But where's it coming into land? Uh, in, how is it deepening both the, the forms of explanation and the people who are, and the people who are explaining both, things to each both other? Both work together well. Perhaps we saw uh, a bias towards one kind of interactivity and, and not the other. But they do work together well. And perhaps with that scenario, we can, we can look at. I liked the activities I did. I liked mm -hmm. the fact it was varied. Mm -hmm. um, I was really pleased with the fact that I managed to get some of them onto the actual formula work. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm going to try and bring the envelope system in more often, because I think that's a nice change of pace. Um, and, and continue, you know, keeping my lesson a good pace and work on that and improve. 
Okay. So, say if we, we, we looked at one area of, of your performance mm. and it was pace, mm. what could... If I looked at that in a, a term's time, two term's time or a year's time, mm. what do you think your, your own personal target would be? Um, I'd want it pretty much spot on. Right. So. Um, I, think, I think my starter dragged a little bit. Right. And then that affected the main part, the main delivery. Right, okay. So I think, I think my starter needs to just be tweaked a little bit better. OK. Maybe think about changing the activity they do. Right. Um, I want you to think back to when we actually worked together. Yep. And we looked at assessment for learning. Right. Remember, I made comments in my books and I shared those comments with yes. you. Yes, yep. What struck you in particular about some of the assessment for learning work we, that I showed you? Well, it's, it's to say positive. Right. And then it's how to improve right. and how to go on to the next level. Right. Ah, so I should have had that on my whiteboard or somewhere. Well, we've discussed it, maybe. We've, we've discussed sub-levels, haven't we? Mm, yeah. So how do you see you... Well, you you're improving with your assessments. You, st you notice how I use a colour scheme? Right. Um, with the, the dark bit where the learning outcomes on, right. I could get my classes used to knowing that if I put like an A next to it, that's right. a 5A. Right. If I put a B on, that's a 5B. And right. I could I could follow that method. OK. And you'd, you'd you would obviously think? follow that up from the national curriculum oh, and actually use yeah, that definitely. as a, a from support From our levels material. in our classroom, yeah. Excellent stuff. OK, I, I think we've covered those two elements quite well. It would have been nice to sort of listen to what they were saying mm. to actually just um, see if they understood what mm. the lesson was about. Yeah. Do you think you could create opportunities for that to happen? Definitely. Right. Definitely. When you're talking about opportunities for children to talk to each other and, mm -hmm. and to listen, what might that look like? Well, maybe I'd, I'd reconsider how the tables and chairs are set out. Mm. From an outsider's point of view or anyone that's coming into the classroom, it's going to look like the class are just talking amongst themselves, which is exactly what I want. Now, the problem with that is I've got to make sure they're actually talking about the questions and not what's gone on in the playground and this morning or whatever. So I think I need to train them and develop that skill within them to really explore their thinking and how they approach a question and how they work in a team to come up with some answers. If you take the view that all management is kind of a mixture of support and direction, yes. uh, you did it in a very collegial way, what are going to have to be your main characteristics to assist her? My main character uh, well, to be fully supportive for a start and uh, to be a good listener. Uh, I've got to sort of obviously sort of um, politically talk with the people I am responsible to. That's not the right word, is it? With the department under pressure to hit its targets, John suspects Jeff might also need support. What do you need from your managers? I, I need support, I need resources, maybe extra staff. Mm -hmm.